Hi, this is Sean Chua. Welcome back to SimpleChemConcepts.com. In the topic of electrolysis, there are only two types of cells known as electrolytic cells and simple cells. In my previous videos, I've discussed on the concepts regarding electrolytic cells and today we are going to talk about simple cells. Now, in terms of content coverage and in terms of marks allocation, um, about 90 to 95 percent of the content as well as uh, the marks uh, will be given to electrolytic cells. Only about 5 to 10 percent will be given to simple cells. Simple cells is known to be very simple and thus the name, but a lot of students in my tuition classes complained uh, year after year to me that they find it very confusing when they learn it in their schools. So today we're going to look into simple cells in more details. Let's take a look using the board. Now, uh, this is a basic uh, setup of a simple cell. Uh, so first of all, what are the different components of a simple cell? A simple cell, first of all, need two different metal solid electrodes uh, on the left, on, on your right, and the two metal electrodes must be different. That's very important. So I call it a metal one or metal two, and to be more specific, uh, in uh, using an example, let me uh, use this metal um, electrode on your left to be zinc metal and then on the right I'll use a less reactive metal known as copper. All right? So zinc is more reactive than copper in the reactivity series. That's something that we're aware. Now, and the metal electrodes which are different has to be connected together and usually we'll see a copper wire or a connecting wire that connect them together and uh, you can have a voltmeter uh, with a V that is shown there on the end meter that measures the current or can simply just have wires connected. Sometimes in some challenging exam based question, you realize they, do, they even remove the copper wire and they just put the two metal electrodes touching each other because that eventually will close the circuit, which is very important. Now, and the two metal electrodes must be uh, so-called deep inside an electrolyte so this electrolyte usually uh, acid solutions, uh, could be alkaline solutions, could be soluble salt solutions. It could even be a fruit such as lemon or an orange. All right. So let's use an example over here, and we have uh, say sodium chloride or dilute. So it's an aqueous sodium chloride solution, uh, which is in a dilute uh, uh, state. All right, dilute sodium chloride. So this will be the electrolyte. So what I'm going to share with you next is how a simple cell works, which comes in a series of steps. And I want you to follow me really closely, all right? Now, so the first step is to find out between the two metals, which metal is more reactive. Because the more reactive metal will be preferentially uh, be oxidized. Because all metals want to be uh, positive metal ions, the cations itself. So between zinc and copper, what I'm going to do is I'm going to circle zinc and tell myself that zinc is more reactive. So what happened is, on this side, zinc metal, or the zinc electrode, will get oxidized to become zinc 2 plus ions, and it will give out two electrons, all right, or two moles of electrons per mole of zinc metal. And then the second step is that the electrons that has been um, so-called released by the zinc metal, all right, will go up the wire. All right, that's very important. And then whatever goes up must come down. So on this side, the electrons will come down. Now, uh, a lot of students um, that did not know the concepts well will make uh, is silly mistakes like what? Like having the copper metal to receive the electrons, to get the electrons, but it doesn't make sense because why? If you take a look, if copper ever take electrons, let's say two more of electrons, then you will form copper two minus ions, which is very unusual for a metal because metals don't like to be in the negative uh, ion state. They don't want to be anions. So this is wrong. I'm going to erase this away. All right, do take note this one of the common error. So what really happened over here is you should look at the electrolyte, all right? And then and find out what are all the ions that's present. So for dilute sodium chloride solution, you have sodium ion, chloride ions, 
you have H plus ions, you have hydroxide ions, and then one. And then one of the ions all right, will be attracted towards the copper electrode. Will be attracted there. It will be the positive metal ions, so it's either sodium or hydrogen ions that will be attracted nearer to the copper electrode to receive the electrons, all right, which is of opposite charge. So between sodium ions and hydrogen ions, hydrogen ions has a higher ease of discharge. So the hydrogen ions will come closer to the electrode and then it will accept the electron. So in this case, this will be the ionic half equations on this side. And then hydrogen gas will be produced. Hydrogen gas will be produced at this side. Now, so this is perfect, uh, whereby one side, all right, of the simple cell undergo what we call oxidation because oxidation is known as the loss of electron so this side is undergoing oxidation but on the other side all right it will undergo reduction so the positive hydrogen ions will gain electrons all right and then get reduced because reduction is gain of electrons so this side will be reduction now so this simple cell is definitely a spontaneous redox reaction because both oxidation and reduction occurs simultaneously. Now what, what's next? Um, is that you need to label the two electrodes as well as determine uh, the charges of the two electrodes, whether it's positive or negative charge, all right? So let's take a look. Now, um, if you realize that on this side, copper, all right, at the copper electrode is the cation that is attracted. So cation is attracted over here, all right? So this side, because it attract cation, this will be known as the cathode. So cathode undergo reduction. So the other side must be the anode, and anode undergo oxidation. You have watched my uh, videos on um, the electrolytic cells. Uh, you probably heard me saying over and over again that is an a mnemonic or a super memory uh, phrase where we memorize so that we can remember it very well. Uh, it's called an ox rib can, which means oxidation occurs at the anode and reduction occurs at the cathode. So this is one of those which I told my students to remember it so that you can uh, double confirm your answers towards the end, all right, before I submit uh, in an examination. Now, uh, besides that, what else I told you all in electrolytic cells in the previous videos? Um, probably most of you know about this, it's called oil rig. It's another mnemonics whereby we memorize and then uh, in order to help us, okay? So, this is what I call oil rig of electrons. Oxidation is loss of electron, reduction is gain of electron. Tron, all right, so this is what you see over here on the oxidation side and the reduction side. Now, what else? The last thing to take note is in terms of uh, the charges on the uh, electrodes itself. Now, which is positive, which is negative? Now, this one I want you to know that a simple cell, which is also known as electric cell, uh, is basically used as a battery, all right, or battery uh, simple cells. Uh, put it simply. So, um, if you know how a battery looks like, right? So let me take a uh, show you. This is a battery. A battery has a positive and negative terminal. If you still recall how electrons uh, travel uh, around a battery or in and out of battery, is that it always travel out of the battery. Uh, through the negative terminal and then return back at the positive terminal. Now in this case, we're going to bring this battery down into this simple cell and ask ourselves where is where are the electrons being released? It's at the zinc electrode. Which also means this is the negative electrode where this copper is the positive electrode. Alright, so this is important in terms of uh, how you play with a simple cells and use it to solve uh, your examination questions. 
Now, last but not least, I will just want to uh, share that uh, in simple cells, uh, the only way to increase uh, the amount of electricity, uh, which also means its voltage or its current, is to change the electrodes uh, such that the difference of the two metals uh, is greater in the reactivity series. So one way to make this a better uh, uh, simple cell, all right, in terms of uh, electricity generation, is to change probably the zinc metal to magnesium, because magnesium uh, is more reactive than zinc, so there will be a greater indifference in terms of reactivity when you reference it to copper. Okay, so that's a simple cell, and uh, this is Sontra once again. I hope you really enjoyed this video and find it useful. Feel free to share with your friends, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Take care.